Welcome guys to this another video. In today's video, we want to look at a stage one City and Gills math pass paper, guys. Alright? So stick with me throughout this series. Now, unlike the stage two City and Gills pass paper series, we'll be covering 20 questions in each video. Alright? So in today's video, we want to complete from question one to 20. Alright? So stick with me, guys, to the end. Before we get into this video, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button as well as these are all free ways to support the Chris Matz Academy. Alright, now let's get right into it guys. Now, just like the stage 2 City Angles Math Pass paper, stage 1 doesn't allow for the use of a calculator. Alright. But the cool thing here guys the questions are pretty easy all right a lot of them don't even require any working it just requires a little reasoning some common sense reasoning and you're good all right so let us look at question one here now which of the following list is in number order all right now we talk about number order all right now we know that normal when we count we start from smallest to largest all right so which of these options here meet that criteria? Here we have 150, then 6. So we know this does not meet the criteria. Here we have 150, then we go on to a smaller number. This 2 does not meet the criteria. Here we have 6, then we go up to 73, then we have 39 going back down. So this doesn't meet the criteria. Now this is what we are looking for, alright? So we have 6. 39 73 then 150 so notice these numbers from smaller to larger all right so that's what we're looking at for when we talk about number order so our answer here would actually be option d now we're looking at question two guys so which one of the following amounts of money is in order of increasing values all right which means the money is progressing from smallest to largest, all right? So let us look which one of these options meets that criteria. So we start with option A. So we have 25 cents, then 50 cents, which is greater than 25 cents, then $1, which is greater than 50 cents, then $10, which is greater than $1, all right? Which means option A right here fits that criteria, all right? Now here we are at with question three. So five people took a typing test. This table shows how many words each people typed in a minute, all right? Now which typist came third in the test, all right? Fair enough, so words typed in a minute. So which of these typists would have came third? So it would have been that person who typed the third highest amount of words in that minute, all right? So let us look. At the third highest value here now the highest value would have been 48 second highest would have been 45 third highest value would have been 43 all right which is michael right there so the person who would have came third in the test would have been michael right here which is option d all right now we're looking at question four so the picture shows a plate of sweets all right how many sweets are on the plate? So I want to count them. The best thing to do in a situation like this, guys, is to mark as you count. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 all right so therefore our answer here would actually be 14 sweets all right now we're looking at question 5 so here is a sequence of numbers 4 8 12 16 the next number in this sequence is and this is pretty easy actually now by sequence it means that these numbers are increasing in a particular manner or pattern all right want of a better word now what do you notice here here we have 4 then 8 then 12 then 16 all right what, what you should notice here is that what each time we're going up by 4 all right each value we increase in that value by 4 so notice if we add 4 to 4 we'll get the 8 
If we add 4 to the 8, we get the 12 here. If we add 4 to the 12, we'll end up with 16. So therefore, the next number in this sequence will actually be 16 plus 4, all right, which is what? Which is 20, which is option D right here. So hopefully that makes a whole lot of sense to you guys. So here we are at with question 6. In this calculation, the triangle times 4 is equal to 28. The symbol, which is the triangle, stands for, for what? Which number? Alright, so in other words, what can you multiply by 4 that gives you the 28? So this requires us to know our timetable, guys. What times 4 give you 28? There you go. That number would actually be 7, alright? So 7 times 4 will give you the 28. Now we're looking at question 7. In this calculation, 9 minus the number sign right here is equal to 5. The symbol, which is the number sign, stands for, all right? In other words, what you could do, if you're not comfortable with the number sign, you can replace the number sign with a box or X or whatever you're comfortable with, all right? So 9 minus what will give you 5? That's basically what they're asking here. What can you take from 9 and you'll end up with a result of 5? There you go. That would actually be 4. Alright, so what you could do is try each of these values until you get the correct answer. Alright, so if we place 4 here, 9 minus 4 actually gives us the 5. So that's why our answer is option A right here, which is 4. Alright guys, now we're looking at question 8. Now 50 cent can be written as... Now, the cents are usually written after the decimal point, all right? So, this right here, which is option C, would be our answer, all right? This is the one that is displaying the 50 cents. So, what this reads as $0.50, all right? So, therefore, option C would be our answer right there. Now, we're looking at question 9. What is this figure in words, all right? How do we read a figure like this, all right? Now, this figure reads as... 7,209, all right? So we're going to look for this in words. So recall that, 7,209. So let's look for that, 7,209. So just like how we'll read that number, that's pretty much how we are going to look for it written, all right? So therefore, option B will be your answer right there. All right, guys, now we're at question 10. A customer asks for one and a quarter kilogram of cheese. This is the same as now one and a quarter and in math usually represents addition. So one and a quarter is the same thing as saying one plus a quarter, which is one divided by four. Now what you would have observed here is that all the answers here are given in decimal. Alright? So what we need to do is to convert this part of the number, which is the fraction aspect of the mixed fraction here, to a decimal. So can also be written as 1 divided by 4, all right, with a division sign right here, all right? Now what we could also do is to rewrite this in the long division format, all right, so 4 into 1. So, 1 divided by 4 is the same thing as saying 4 into 1. How many times can 4 go into 1? Or want of a better way of saying it, we can say how many times can we divide 1 into 4. Now, 4 into 1 goes 0 times. Alright, I'm now going to add a decimal point here, which then allows me to add a 0 here, making this 10. Now, 4 into 10 goes 2 times. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this 2 by the 4 here. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, the reason why I've done that, alright? This was done to help me ascertain the remainder that will be left over after I would have taken 4 out of 10 twice, alright? So now I'm going to take the 8 from the 10. So I'm going to subtract here. 8 from 10 will leave me with 2. Alright, now because I'm already behind the decimal point, I can add another 0 here, making this 20. 4 into 20 goes 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Alright, 20 from 20 is 0. 
and this is a sign that we are through all right so one divided by four as a fraction is the same thing as saying 0 0.25 all right now one plus 0 0.25 is the same thing as 1.25 all right so therefore our answer here would actually be 1.25 which is option b right here so hopefully that makes a lot of sense guys now we are going to move down to question 11. all right guys now we're at question 11 so 0 0.5 is the same as and notice all of these answers were all given as a fraction all right so in other words they want us to convert the 0 0.5 to a fraction and how do we convert a decimal to a fraction what we can do here is to draw a fraction bar here now right underneath the decimal point here we are going to place a one now for every digit that comes after the decimal point we are going to write a zero underneath that digit all right so here we're going to place a zero as we only have one digit after the decimal point which is this five right here now after doing that guys what we can do now is to remove the decimal point all right so this is the same thing as saying 5 divided by 10 as a fraction all right now what can we do here with this we can reduce this fraction so 5 into itself goes one time 5 into 10 goes two times all right so this is the same thing as saying 1 divided by 2 which is the same thing as a half written in the form of 1 divided by 2 all right so therefore our answer here will actually be option d all right now we're looking at question 12 which is the smallest value single bill that can be used to pay for an item costing 17 dollars all right now the smallest bill that can be used to pay for an item costing 17 dollars here of course it would actually be the 20 dollar bill all right, so this one is quite easy actually so as i said before guys the stage one paper doesn't really require a whole lot of working out more like some um, common reasoning and you will be fine now we're moving down to question 13 all right so question 13 the length of a bed in a hotel is approximately six feet all right so notice these other measurements are pretty far off the length of a bed is is definitely not six inches that that's pretty short all right the length of the bed would not be six meters that's too long and the length of the bed will definitely not be six centimeters as this is very very short all right so therefore our answer here would actually be option a which is six feet all right guys now we're looking at question 14 the diagram shows the location of two places all right so here we have anato bay and we have kingston now they say a driver leaves anato bay to travel to kingston in which direction is kingston all right so if you're leaving from anato bay to kingston which direction are you going you're going where you're going south all right so recall the map guys all right so we have what west here east north and south all right so the moment you leave in another bay you would be going south to kingston all right so therefore our answer here would actually be option b all right guys so here we're at looking at question 15 quite easy question here so they ask us what time does the clock show all right and this here the time is actually 6 15 all right and i'm going to explain why now the short hand gives us the hours so notice the short hand is very close to, to six right here all right so the long hand now gives us the minutes all right and the time interval between each reading is actually five so here would have five minutes plus five minutes that's 10 minutes plus an additional five minutes again will bring that up to 15 minutes all right so therefore this reads as 15 minutes after 6 all right which is the same thing as what 6 15 all right all right guys now we're looking at question 16 a girl leaves home at 6 30 a.m to walk to school it takes her 45 minutes to walk to school what time will the girl arrive now if we want to know the time that a girl will arrive then we need to add the 45 minutes to the time that she would have left home 
Now 6.30 a.m. is the same thing as saying 6 hours 30 minutes. All right. Now what we want to do now is to add 45 minutes to the 6 hour 30 minutes to ascertain the time she will arrive. Now 45 minutes is the same thing as 0 hour 45 minutes. All right. So we're going to add this up. Now 45 plus 30 will give us 75 minutes, alright, but we can actually get an hour out of 75 minutes. Now an hour is the same thing as 60 minutes, alright, so we're going to take that 60 minutes out of the 75 minutes, which will leave us with just 50 minutes. So if we take 60 from the 75 minutes, we'll be left with 50 minutes. Now what we're going to do is to take that 60 minutes over the hours section. Those 60 minutes will be the same thing as what? One hour. So there we go. All right. So six plus one, that's seven. So she'll reach school at 7.15, all right, a.m. that is. So therefore, our answer here would actually be option C. All right, guys. Now we're looking at question 17. Which one of the following is the lightest? So here they say a mango, a cookie. A tin of beans a sack of flour all right and right away this is a pretty easy one so right away we know that it would actually be a cookie all right a mango is definitely heavier than a cookie a tin of bean is have, have a quite amount of weight on it and a sack of flour is definitely heavy than a cookie as well so therefore the most appropriate answer here would actually be option B which is a cookie all right guys now we're looking at Question 18. A cup of water is a boat. Alright. And of course, our answer here would actually be D. Now, one milliliter is very, very small. That's a very small amount. 10 is a very small amount as well. And 25, these are all small amount of liquid. Alright. Or water in this particular context. So, 250 milliliter would actually be the most appropriate answer as it pertains to a cup of water all right so therefore our answer here would actually be option d all right so again guys these are pretty much some general knowledge questions not much work you know required here in the first 20 questions based on what we are seeing thus far now let us move down to question 19 now we're looking at question 19 the thermometer shows the temperature in a room all right now the temperature is now when we look at this graduation here key thing to observe notice the graduation in between the 0 and the 10 each must represents 2 fahrenheit 2 degrees fahrenheit all right so so notice here if we have 0 then 2 then 4 then 6 then we have 8 then we have 10 so it's going up by 2 all right now look at the reading here now here we would have 72 then 74 now we would have 76 all right so therefore this reads as 76 degrees fahrenheit all right now we're looking at question 20 guys which is the final question we'll be looking at in this video what is the freezing point of water in degrees fahrenheit and again this is a general knowledge type of question all right of course this is option C right here, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So we know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. However, when we convert that measurement to Fahrenheit, it reads as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? So we measure temperature in Fahrenheit, in Celsius, in a whole lot of other units as well, all right? All right, guys, thank you for sticking with me to the end of this one. What we have been seeing here in the first 20 question is that a, a majority of the question doesn't really require any working all right they require some common reasoning and some basic knowledge probably so it's not so bad the first 20 question on this stage one paper i'm looking forward to see you guys in our next video where we tackle from question 21 to 40 so i'm looking forward to see you guys in that one if you haven't done it yet guys please smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up as these are all free ways to support the chris Matz academy as we strive to make awesome things happen i'm looking forward to see you guys in our next video until then blessings and peace